Hey, hey everybody, my name is Marcel Ernie, Ernie Racing News, the Canadian journalist. Today is what, Tuesday night on the 26th Boxing Day, and I got a reminder in the comments, Marcel, don't forget about E4623, the foreign affairs to oust the WEF, the UN control. So they can just say any time that there's a pandemic and their emergency powers take over, an unelected group of oligarchs, elitists, you know, unelected group of assholes that want to destroy humanity and have it rebranded under their name, the, the new Stalins of the world, right? And so... Yeah, I want to remind everybody, like, we're right now at 61,982 signatures. And I, I got to remind you guys why we're signing this petition, besides just reading this, but we're going to take a little clip from the UK Parliament talking about the same thing. I've shown a clip before, but we're going to continue. So, Canada's agreement per to participate in the UN WHO Comprehensive Agenda 2030 undermines national sovereignty and our personal autonomy. You do not have control over my body, what I do with my body, what I put in my body, what do I inject in my body. Hell no. Agenda 2030 and its operational sustainable development goals, comprehensive sexuality education, the UN judicial review, the international health regulations, One Health and similar programs are being rapidly rapidly implemented absent the awareness and consent of the people and their elected representatives. You know, Agenda 2030 and secretly negotiated amendments to the IHR could likely impose unacceptable, intrusive, universal surveillance, violating the rights and freedoms guaranteed in the Canadian Bill of Rights and Charters and of Rights and Freedoms and um, on and on and on. This gives them the authority to arrest you and force inject you. This breaks the Nuremberg Code. They want... They put up orders and you obey or they come in there with their military, police, whoever listens to these ops. Um, let's go over to, here we have the UK petition debate relating to the international health regulations. And um, this was streamed eight days ago. Government take a pause to apply some critical thinking to this situation before blindly supporting the World Health Organization's installation as our new global public health power. It's absolutely essential, Dame Maria, that the government makes a clear and unambiguous promise that it will neither support nor abide by anything which in any way undermines our national sovereignty. We have not spent so many years battling to get out of the frying pan of the EU to jump straight back into the fire with the equally unaccountable and undemocratic and hopeless World Health Organization. So yeah, okay, he's just getting into it, but I recommend everybody go and watch this. It's on the UK Parliament's website, or YouTube. Um, yeah, so let's just take a little bit more, a little, a little look. Chairmanship, I too would like to thank the 116,000 members of the public who signed this public petition so that we can have this important debate today and I'd also like to thank Dr. David Bell, uh, someone who actually has worked for a long number of years for the WHO for his briefings to me and also to the Swiss lawyer Philip Crusoe for his uh, contributions to my information uh, today. And I would like to start by agreeing with the Honourable Member for Shipley who we both spoke in the public. So yeah guys, 116,000 signatures has done well for bringing this to debate in front of the parliament. ...debate on the 17th of April earlier this year where we considered the pandemic treaty. It is impossible to consider either the pandemic treaty or the amendments to the international health regulations in isolation. They are two linked uh, instruments of the WHO and they need to be considered in parallel. And my question, my opening question, is why, why does the WHO make false claims regarding proposals to seize states' sovereignty? Uh, Dame Maria, the Director General of the WHO has stated that no country will cede sovereignty to the WHO. Referring to the WHO's new pandemic agreement and the proposed amendments to the international health regulations currently being negotiated, 
His statements are clear and unequivocal and also wholly inconsistent with the text he's referring to. And I would remind the chamber that this is the unelected, unaccountable, uh, non-tax-paying, uh, immune from uh, prosecution due to diplomatic immunity, Director General of the WHO, and they're all employees. Bam! Immune to prosecution, unelected, globalist piece of crap. Yep. ...of the United Nations and the WHO enjoy these uh, particular perks. Any rational examination of the text in question show that the documents propose a transfer of decision-making power to the WHO regarding basic aspects of societal function which countries undertake to enact. The WHO Director General will have the sole authority to decide when and where they're applied and the proposals are intended to be binding under international law. Bullshit. Continued claims that sovereignty is not lost echoed by politicians in this house and other elected uh, assemblies and of course the media therefore raise very important questions concerning motivations competence and indeed ethics the intent of the text is a transfer of decision making currently vested in nations and individuals to the who when its director general decides that there's a threat of a significant disease outbreak or other health emergency likely to cause multi uh, likely to cross multiple national borders. It is very unusual for nations to undertake to follow external entities regarding the basic rights and health care of their citizens, uh, more so when this has a major economic and geopolitical implication. Bam, anytime they say we got a we got a problem with a disease or etc. Now we're taking control of the whole world and you guys are not just getting recommendations like in the last pandemic. <laughs> the last pandemic but now you do exactly as we say or we arrest you the question of whether sovereignty is indeed being transferred and the legal status of such an agreement is therefore of vital importance particularly to legislators of democratic states such as ourselves we have an absolute duty to be sure of our ground and i systematically examine that ground here today so amending the 2005 International Health Regulations may be a straightforward way to quickly deploy and enforce what appears to be the new normal for health control measures that we've seen implemented since COVID-19 pandemic. The current text applies to virtually the entire global population, counting 196 states, including all 194 WHO member states. Approval may or, or may not be required by a formal vote of the World Health Assembly as the recent 2022 amendment was adopted through consensus. If the same approval mechanism is to be used in May 2024, many countries and indeed the public may remain unaware of the broad scope of the new text and its implications to national and individual sovereignty. This is why today's debate is so important. Bam, I'm going to leave the rest to you guys. Now you know what it's going to get into. Huh, okay. Um, there's a few more topics I want to get on. But again, um, petition, make sure you get on and sign E4701. I signed it a few weeks ago. And of course, the last petition that uh, we all just had, where did it go? Um, E46, no, no. <laughs> 4623. Actually, when I look up E4623, I forgot about this on uh, Twitter, X, um, I was curious what other people were talking about, right? Yep, finally some people waking up and questioning him, Golview, Freeland, and are all looking to move up to the rich and powerful at our expense. Sign and forward everyone. And um, so free Canada, a few hashtags. What is this fucking title? Yeah, talking about the petition, they're doing little snippets of it. And, um, and then interestingly, here's my video. I would rather see Justina arrested and criminally charged, but I would accept a resignation and then charges laid. And then here is um, my video uh, that I did on it. So that's great. So people, then with much thanks to Ernie Racing, well, <laughs> I better I'll never get on here to see this stuff. Um, and another one. Let's tell Trudeau what we think of him. Help this vote of no confidence petition reach half a million signatures. Wow. Another share. Would health organization another share? Oh, another one of my videos. Can't forget about the WHO trying to rule the world with the needles and fascist idiots. Sign the petition to stop 
teabag dough from selling us out and for awareness. And here's a different video similar. So, wow, I guess I was one of the guys, one of the only ones really pushing it here. Because when you search it, it's just, we'll see if we find. Here's another one. Here's another one. Trudeau, vote no confidence. This is not binding, but it deals a PR blow to the potato dictator ruining Canada with his merry band of corrupted libs and morally banked NDP. And another one. So that's how these videos get around, guys. I make the video. You guys share the video on Twitter, it looks like. Um, and another one. Say no to unelected control by the WF who petition. Please push out E46. Wow. So yeah, this kind of gives me more hope. Maybe I should be making more videos. Because it seems to be like, you know, it's just you and me, guys. we got to get this done. And that's it for Twitter under E46. And under with the one we just did, E4701. Oh, what do we got here? The party of Canada has taken a double-digit lead over the Liberals, with the governing party at risk of falling to third place. Keith Baldry joins us with more on this. Keith, the majority of respondents in this poll say it's time for Justin Trudeau to go. <laughs> yeah, very strong majority. Another day, another bad poll for Justin Trudeau. This is from Ipsos, done for Global News. Uh, here's one of the more troubling uh, findings for Mr. Trudeau. 72% of all respondents think it's time for him to leave office, to step down. Even more troubling, one third of the liberal supporters, 33%, also think he should step down. His own Hell yeah. Freaking get out of here. We Step down and charges laid. We want a trial. We want a public trial for Trudeau and his cronies. We did it. 386 698 signatures. E47. That's right, guys. That's where we got stuck on. Um, here it is. E4701. Uh, yeah, 38669. So... Um, the Canadian media is hiding Canada's largest petition in history. Is it a media blackout? Hmm. Yeah, guys. Well. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. What's this one? This whole COVID madness, this so-called pandemic, it was just a test balloon. Yeah, yeah, test balloon. Who knows what she's going to say. It'll get a censor to banned, but... Uh, Truth from Christine Anders and Anderson all the time. One of my favorite people in the world. Still time to register. Oh, here's one of my videos. Here's one of my videos. Wow, good stuff. Thanks for sharing. Another one, the original one. Oh, nice. Another one, another one, another one. Oh, yes. Good. Okay, the other ones. Another one. Sign it now. Another one. Wow, freaking awesome, guys. Thank you for sharing my videos on Twitter. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so glad people signed it. I'm so glad we got the 486,000. I was definitely hoping for more, but nobody really knows about it. Just the people looking for it. Ernie Racing News, guys. Um, to finish off, I'm going to do a story on uh, this video in particular. Trudeau uh, has, you know, this Brit let's not forget what he has said in the past, what he has called us, and what he has done. We, lest we forget. Ernie Racing News.